Hi, I'm Brandon and I'm a HND film student currently studying out of Cumberland and over the past two terms of my course I have been working alongside First Division Football Club Albion Rollers FC. Albion Rollers FC are a professional football club hailing from Clifton Hill Stadium in Coatbridge, Scotland, competing in the SPFL who as of 2016 and 2017 play in League One. The club was founded in 1882 as the result of a merger between two opposing Coatbridge sides, Albion FC and Rovers FC and joined the SFL 2nd Division in 1903 before leaving in 1915 and then returning in the 1919 and 1920 season. I began working at Albion Rovers halfway through 2016 as part of a work experience placement for my course and I was placed under the social media and filming departments along with my classmate and friend Dale McLean and put under the watchful eye of social media manager Daniel Mossy. Involvement wise, um, basically I, I, if you take all overall aspects when I help to do media, um, under 20s I do mostly help like with your boys, yeah. get a work experience in, um, I get asked to do that through Tony because he's got a lot of things as you see today. Yeah. He does that, he, yeah. does, he does first team coach, he does um, help to run the under 20s, but he's took a step back for that now. Ah, but, yeah. um, busy man. He's a very busy man. Um, the uh, run all media aspects, I'm now also going to head to guys for media, um, running all the social media pages, the Facebook pages, getting you boy, boys involved, let you get do what you want. I'd rather give you freedom, as you've noticed. Yeah. I'd rather, I don't want to tell you what to do, I'd rather have, give you freedom to go and do yeah. what you want to do. Because it's the only way you're going to learn from your mistakes. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, that's the way I learned. And for being 20, 23, nearly 24, I think being the head of media at a professional football club, it's a, it's a lot of stress on your back. Yeah. Uh, it's, but it's really good. It's, it learns me as well. Because if I put something wrong on Twitter, then I get a phone call off the chairman the very next minute. Um, you know I mean, because he gets messages straight away, and then he, so he's going to take that down and can post this etc. Like, as well. Um, he gives me freedom as well to put up, which is great, and I love that. Um, and obviously, I want to try and take balls to the next level with social media. As you can see, I had a lot of interaction. Say, tell the game had a lot of interaction when we had to go for the jokes, all the wrestling. When yeah. we'd had Goldberg, who's next? Right. Um, if you understand the jokes of that. Um, all the Celtic fans loved the interaction, yeah. which got us more followers, got us more popularity. All, we sold out the game against Celtic. I can't complain. I mean, so to me, to me, that was something right, and we were getting more interest, and we can sell out a game against Celtic. But obviously, we know why he's wrong, Coach. Um, yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. During his interview, I asked Daniel if you could give us any insight into myself and Dale's work experience. I think it's a great opportunity for you. As Tony said before, it's good for CVs, um, it's good for you to see a work professional with a football club. Um, you're working alongside with under 20s coaches playing the Champions League. Not every day you get to do something like that. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect it either, no way lie. You've got you've got Darren Young who's represented Scotland, same as Brian Kerr represented Scotland to the highest levels. Um, I think this is going to be great for use within the future roles if he's wanting to be here if like just doing helping the club out or if he's or if David can sort you with something else as he said as well or if he's wanting to move on to bigger and better things as well or even mix them mix them both I think you've got a very good opportunity if you can say you've got a professional club they can go that well if you don't you can just go there you go eat it Albion Rollers have a huge reputation for working with young people such as myself, with former coach Tony McMahon setting up the Rovers under 20 squad alongside now manager Brian Kerr. We've got six all in, and basically, we, we like the idea that we pitched them, you know, that we want a pathway from the youngest teams 2010s that go all the way up to feed right into the first team. So it's like participation, and then as we get up, you know, there's that elite level at the, at the top of it. Um, it's worked brilliantly putting an under-19s team together last season. They got to the Boys Club Scottish Cup final. Ten of them have been signed for our under-20s this year and from our under-20s who have ended up with nine players debuting in their first season. That's an unbelievable record compared to most Scottish clubs. During his interview, Tony gave us an insight into what he thinks the children will get out of the Easter camps that he helped set up. You just see what kids get out of it. I, just, I like people just... You know, getting better, progressing, making the most of themselves. Um, for instance, young Connor Shields, who's coaching with us today, you know, fell out of love with football, wasn't enjoying it, didn't like it. We gave him the opportunity to enjoy his football again with the boys' club, and he's played eight or nine times for the first team this year already. Starting big games against Airdrie, Airdrie an hour away from home, you know, those types of things. And to see people progressing and making the most of it, regardless of their ability, 
is why you're doing this. Tony also took the time to comment on myself and Dale's work. Links with the local college is really, really important. Where you know it's not just you guys. We've got um, people that are on employability courses with the college coming down to do you know some work around about the club. They get some experience on the gate, cash handling, all that kind of stuff. We so we don't get anybody. We want everybody that is within North Lancaster to be able to use this club as a platform. You know, hopefully you guys can use it for your CV and yeah. um, it can grow you. Some of the stuff you've done for the twenties has been brilliant. We're looking for people next year if they want to come in and you know video the games or cut the games, cut the games for any sports students or camera uh, media students that want to do it, then we're open. You know, come speak to us. You'll, no pressure on you to be here all the time, yeah. but there's a fabulous opportunity for you to, to develop your own CV and uh, through a link you've got a Prince's Trust course coming up, all that kind of stuff. So loads happening for young people and if they want to get involved then we can just get in touch with it. Yeah. Basically, it's to get kids involved in the club, get them here at Clifton Hill, get them playing football. I sent a picture the other day there of one of the first camps when I first started, and there was 14 kids at it. And as you can see now, we've got 80 odd kids there this week. We're on course to get that again next week. And the feedback we're getting is that they're coming because of the quality that we've got on offer, the value for money from the camps as well, and just the fact that they're enjoying it. You know, a lot of these kids have, are coming back, or they're, they're from other, been at other places and just want to come here and enjoy it. They come to games on a Saturday when they get their tickets, and they just like to grow the crowd and grow the supporter base, basically. Yeah, it's been brilliant. I mean, we had the idea of, you know, as I say, community teams feeding in in the twenties. We identified Brian Kerr as a candidate that we wanted to, to work with the boys. And Darren knew him from playing at Dundee. I was on a few courses with Brian, so he was the ideal person to come in. He's worked brilliantly with them, and he's worked brilliantly with us as a, a coaching staff as well. He's fitted in really, really well. And just going into the future, what you want to get out of this, and what you want to do in the future. I just want to grow the numbers, um, as you can see it's difficult um, you know, with the pitch, Andy Redmond does a brilliant job for us, you know, he'll be up here rolling this every night, make sure it's still in a good state for the first team on a Saturday, if we can grow the numbers, if we can work with partners and use other facilities as well, we would love to do that, um, and then ultimately if, if some of these kids end up in our development centres that we may look to set up, then they, they can bring this to our an 18, so we'll halfway change it, a reserve team in there first. Well, I was in Motherwell last year and then it just didn't work out, so I knew Brian Kerr, the under 20s coach from Motherwell. Yeah. And he gave me a text basically asking if I was interested in coming down. I was on trial with a couple of other teams in Clyde. But then I heard, I'm from Cobridge and I heard Alvin Rovers and there was good uh, first team prospects at Rovers. So I decided that this was the club I wanted to come to after Murrow. And yeah, that was it. Just Kerzo got me introduced to the club and came down a couple of training sessions pre season decided that's what I wanted to say. When was it you started playing with the club? Uh, probably August. Of, uh, last year, 2016, at the start of the season, right. because like I say, I was at Motherwell before and it didn't work out, so just over pre-season, come in, train, just at the start of the season, it's been assigned. Yeah. Um, Daniel had mentioned that you were still in school yeah. when you started playing, I'm sure. What was that like, like juggling both of them? Uh, it's quite difficult, because obviously there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of commitment to both uh, school work, and because I'm a 20s player and I'm on the bench for the first team, there is a lot to kind of take into consideration and weigh up, but yeah. the club have been helpful and uh, if I had no other occasion if I need to study or whatever, they're quite willing to let me do that, so they've been helpful and good. Um, what's, uh, what's your uh, views or involvement with uh, Albion Rovers in the community? Well, through school I've been doing a work experience programme throughout the year where I've been able to go to primary schools and take hour-long sessions after school just teaching basic football skills. 
and uh, also during the camps, the Easter camps, I've been able to get involved and help out. So yeah, it's good. The community side's good. I think the, the young boys benefit from because it's first team players and uh, first team coaches. I think the, the boys enjoy that. I also think that we take into consideration what the boys want to do at the camps rather than just what we think is best for them. So um, the majority of the, the activities at our camps are football, like game based rather than like training drills. I think that's really beneficial for the boys and it makes them enjoy it more and that's what's making the camps popular. But I've got, because it's always a part-time club, I want to go to university, but I hope to be here for a while, yeah, and play for the club, maybe first team level if I'm here long enough. Yeah, but just, aye. Uh, you get the first team goal days and now, Ross Stewart, do you think you'll take his position anytime soon? No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear that, Ross Stewart? Wow. Change your shite. Um, <laughs> start in the first team or yeah. did you come up from like the substitute list or whatever? No, no, I just started uh, just well, going for a number one. I was I was looking for a team really to that I could get game time with so that's why um, I came here in the first place. Well, you, know, you see the turnout we've got today, the eight odd kids and eight kids. It's a big thing, especially when you get caught along in the games as well with the ball boys or you know you run up a tunnel and you're seeing them shouting your name and all that. It's really good. It's good to get on the ball. Well, the under twenties I think that's one of the, the I mean I'm proud of a lot of things that happen at the club. But the if somebody had to say to me, pick out two or three things that you're most proud of in the club I would say, at the moment, the under-20s. Uh, a couple of years ago, we didn't have an under-18s, didn't have an under-20s. Uh, we, we pay, uh, there's a lot of uh, praise has to go to people like uh, Tony McMinn and, and Brian Kerr, who started this up over the last few years. And now we're in the SPFL setup. We'll probably end up third or fourth in the league. Uh, so the under-20s is something I'm immensely proud of. Uh, when I come to the games, uh, it, the effort they put in uh, is run in a very professional way and one of the most pleasing things as chairman of the club is to see a few of those players now you know, taking the field for the first team and that's what I would love to see is the, uh, a youth set up um, at Albion Rovers, an under 20s team with some of those players if they're good enough and they worked hard enough getting an opportunity to play first team football. Um, just on young people in general, uh, one of the things that slightly worries me, it's not just about Albion Rovers, but um, I obviously go to all the games home and away, and what you see at games, there are young people there uh, in the crowd, uh, but a lot of the crowds, a lot of the attendances at the, the games in Scotland tend to be older people, yeah. you know, and I would like to, to see... Uh, maybe through people seeing well the under 20s are doing well, younger people come to football. Now I know on a Saturday a lot of people have part time jobs and so yeah. on, but it, it, you know that would be something I would like to uh, see as one of our main aims is to start to attract younger people along to football, to watch football, to take part in football. So that that would be something I would be aiming you know uh, to to do, um, and I would like to hear you know, maybe talk to young people about how we could do to attract more of them to 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 games. That's what you really, that's what you dream of doing every week, you know, going down 
out the crowd and the noise, you know, it was brilliant. That's what every player is part of it every week. Awesome. One last quick one then after one and then back. Um obviously with the Celtic game you sell your phone for the first like twenty odd minutes or so to the first goal. Mm-hmm. When the first goal went in, like what was the kind of thought process then? Was it still a like right, we've held our own, we can maybe take something here or was it like right, okay, it's Celtic, they've scored. Fuck. I think we were just kinda of taking it maybe half by half, you know, and the first goal went in, it was just maybe just sit in and just keep keep doing what we're doing because we're, we're all caught in the right until the first goal went in. So I think it was just more of the same. Really. Maybe try and get to half time with just the one goal and, and then maybe see what we have for the village, got to say. And then take it from there. But you know, Celtic, you know, just put five, six goals past Premier League teams this season. So to get away with 3 0, you know, it was, it was a great day. Even though if the score was 10 0 or something, everybody's just enjoyed the experience. Giving it